Hello, and welcome to the Story Studio podcast. Um, I, just, I, just, I just reminded myself a little bit of the, um, the hello greeting that's started hello. with our new, dire- not really new anymore, our director friend, and it's always like that episode of Seinfeld with the belly button voice, if you know that one. Yeah, I don't think... Hello! Uh, I, I don't think it's new anymore. I think, um, I think, is it a year? No, it's not. It was November. Is that November? Yeah, so getting close to a year with, um, with our the guy we're doing our movie with. Uh, anyway, it'll be fun when we can really start talking about that stuff. But for now, let's, um, today we're going to do an episode about, we're, we're going to have, uh, Dave doesn't even know who the guest is. This is always fun. <laughs> oh, do you want to, do you want to have Dave guess? Do you no, guess? no, that's a horrible idea. <laughs> no, it's, because, it's, because having Dave guess the guests is going to be like an Rorschach ink blot. He's no, just, I know. He's, I know. You're just going to think he's making a bunch of random suggestions, but there's going to be some ominous pattern between them. <laughs> no, I, I love this. And, and his objection makes me want to do it more. I mean, not that I'm feeling extra mischievous or anything today, but when he's like, no, no, I just know there's like, you know, um, something funny will happen. There was a, um, a, a, a fleshlight joke from a very unexpected source at the meeting uh, yesterday, and Dave was missed. <laughs> said, Sean said, that's Dave's bread and butter joke. Um, are we doing, <laughs> speaking of bread and butter, are we doing a worship ever today? Use flashlights to make, you know, bread and butter. <laughs> churning it? Churning the butter. the butter very well. All right. And it's about two minutes in and the uh, first joke of that. that sorry. Um, are we doing a worship show ever after this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's as if there was a way to, to find out. You're so damn late, man. <laughs> we We're might gonna, not I think... ever do a worship show ever again because we start these way too late. My family's always home. We oh, might yeah, have to start we, recording do, them first. Yeah, why don't we do our show over first next week? All right, I could do that. I seriously could. We'll have to, but we have well, to. We well, can't do it on the fly. We have to do early. I'll tell you why off the air. Uh-oh. Oh man, <laughs> that's exactly what a worst show ever would have accomplished for us. You know, it's a good, ver- a good story. <laughs> man, you oh, keep man. everything to yourself. My children keep asking, "Are there any new Dave stories?" And and I never have any to I tell do them. Have a new Dave and story. it's like something out of Oliver Twist with the starving orphans. Their are they giant right eyes now? pleading for Dave stories. Oh, Dave, Dave, are they home right now? My son is. My okay, wife is not yet. Okay, so you won't get in trouble for this then. Okay, so here's what you do. Instead of something cool, you just do something Dave. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just tell us whatever this is. Kind of a is. long story, and we have a guest. We have time. No, our, our guest, what, like, he's coming in at a quarter after. We, we got time. The story's not going to be that long. All right. See, everybody wants it. Look at the comments. Like, <sighs> dude, it's your turn. <laughs> Okay. Something, Dave. Oh, I'm so happy. Right yeah, now. do it instead of the something cool. So sure. years ago when I worked at, at the, the gas station, um, I was cleaning in the store and in the parking lot. Uh, I was on day shift at the time. I was assistant manager. Um, so I'm cleaning and I bend over to like... Oh. Fix the- oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I, I bend, good. I'm on once I'm on the inside of the glass door and I bend over and I'm picking up some trash off the ground and I look right outside the door and I see a wad of cash. And I'm like Ooh. So as I see it, I froze just long enough that a dude walks up, looks, sees that I'm looking down, draws it my his attention to it. He grabs the money before I can even get out the door. And then he opens the door. He's like, um, he said, finders keepers. Uh, oh. He's a real complete dick about it. He's like, finders keepers, uh, I will give you my number. The only way I'm ever going to give this money back is if the person could tell me exactly how much money was in this wad and uh, the serial numbers on all of it. <laughs> I was like, what up? fucking asshole i was so pissed because it had to be at least a few thousand dollars like it was a lot of money people dealt drugs and shit around there so yeah so i was so i can't wait to figure out how this is making us for the podcast earlier i know like like he's got this whole like like, mr blonde right it's like telling the story like the the timelines are going to converge so so yesterday i went to the bank Oh, it was your money from future Dave. (laughs) (laughs) 
No, yesterday I go to the bank. It's early in the morning. There's nobody there. Uh, this this little old dude. Oh, well, not little. He was tall, old dude though. Um, was driving in front of me really slow. Uh-oh. Like you get in the parking lot. I'm just like, oh, come the fuck on. So he parks, and he parks like the farthest you could possibly park from the bank. And I'm like, okay. So I go around him and I get into the bank first and I go in and I do my business at the bank. Yes. I take a big shit on the floor. <laughs> oh, it's going to beat me to the joke. <laughs> I beat you. And I'm walking out the door. The, the, the old man walks in a little bit after me. So I walk out the door and as I'm walking back to my car, I see a hundred dollar bill on the ground. <laughs> I dropped, grabbed it so fast. <laughs> Because I've learned, do not stop, do not look, do not do anything. Man, anybody else want to know where Dave lives after all? Right. And then you didn't put it in your decoy wallet, right? You put it in your real wallet? I put it in my pocket, and I start to walk. And I'm like, oh, shit, it's probably that old man's $100 bill. I'm like, fuck, I can't take an old man's money. So I'm like, so I go back in the bank, and I, and I'm, I, I pretend to use a hand sanitizer thing. I'm actually using it, but, you know, that's my pretense for going in there. So I go in there, and I'm looking at the old man, trying to determine if he looks, part of this story right I'm trying to determine if he looks like he's lost money or not. So, <laughs> what does that look? Well, I don't want to just go say, hey, did anybody lose $100? Because, <laughs> yes, everyone, oh, yeah, I did. All right, so the, the appearance of somebody who has lost money is how similar is that to the appearance of somebody who might shit in the sink? Because I know both of those, oh, oh, and from being from New York, those are all things that can be identified by sight. <laughs> Did he know the serial number? <laughs> I'm not a dick. So, anyway, so I have the hundred dollars in my pocket, and I'm I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, he does. He he's like cashing a check. He doesn't even seem like he notices. And he's got like a giant gold chalice and a big old crown. And you're like, that dude didn't lose it. He didn't no, need money. He, he, did not, he, he did not look particularly uh, well or well-to-do, So which made it even harder. So, yeah, <laughs> he was rolling in fat stacks. I'm like, fuck that dude. <laughs> so, the old man was actually Biggie Smalls. <laughs> <laughs> so I walk out of the bank. I'm like, and I'm like, I just, I, I'm feeling anxious about the whole damn thing. Like, I really don't want to take a moment. Wait, 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 wait. You were feeling anxious? Uh, yeah, fuck you. So <laughs> I, I, I really, I would feel awful if I took this man's money and it was his. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for him to come out. So now, now I'm, I get in my car and I'm sitting there and I'm watching him come out of the bank. And I'm looking to see if he looks around. Because if I lost $100, I'm going to be looking in the grass. And we, like, I think we should <laughs> shoot this as a short film, John. I agree. <laughs> Did John Woo direct this? <laughs> I'm looking for any sign that he's Were there doves that just went up in slow motion? <laughs> I'm looking for any sign that he's lost the money. And um, you just want him to like be like around on all fours. And when he's like slapping the concrete, then you'll go over and say, I think this is yours. With yeah, like yeah. a with like a, a poster board that's got one, five, twenty, five, and a hundred written on it, and then a hundred circled. Like he's <laughs> yeah. comparing it. Hold on, is that it? I need evidence. <laughs> so so he walks out. He doesn't stop. He just walks right to his truck. I'm like, oh, I guess it's not his. <laughs> so I'm about to leave. And then I see him stop in front of his truck. And he's just, he stopped. He, he does. He puts it in his wallet. And I think, is he looking for the money? Like, I don't know, but I can't take it. Like, so, so. Wait, so does, uh, hold on. I think I know how this story ends. It was the old man's hundred. He challenges you to fight him at three o'clock high for it. And that's the reason we have to do the podcast at a different time. (laughs) So, so I stop, I roll down my window. I'm like, uh. Do you have any gray poop on? Yeah. (laughs) Hello, sir. (laughs) Uh, I said. Hey, did you lose anything? And he looks over at me and he's like, Yeah, I lost a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> so I'm like, I reach into my pocket and I like, here you go. I found it. And he's and he just about cries and he says, and I can't tell because he, he's a Jamaican accent. So I can't tell if he said Thank you. You're an angel of God, or thank you. You're an agent of God. Either way, <laughs> I thought you were say maybe an asshole of God. 
I think you should say agent. Agent sounds cooler. <laughs> yeah, agent of God. I'm going to get that like on my a tattoo. <laughs> you actually do strike me as an agent of God, but like one who doesn't know that he's been enlisted. <laughs> it's like that movie, Michael. Yeah, so I, I felt good because I gave the guys money and he was quite happy about it. So, yeah. So he like, offered to give you a hand job at three o'clock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because there's still that suspense element. Why does it change the Toddcast time? Oh, that's for next week. That has nothing to do with this story. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think Sean and I were both waiting for it. It wasn't just me, was it? Uh, I'll tell you you in chat. (laughs) Oh, I got to open this up now. This is fascinating. So while Dave is typing... um, uh, Our guest, I actually didn't get around mentioning, is going to be Austin Van Camp from Story Shop. Um, but not to talk about Story Shop, actually. In a, I mean, kind of, maybe, sort of, but not really. You'll see what, what I mean when we have him on. It's something kind of interesting that happened just earlier this week. Uh, really cool. So he, he's going to pop in like any minute. He's, who knows what he's going to be doing. Um, um, oh, there. Well, look at that. Oh. Hi, guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's what interesting. <laughs> All right. Uh, so pity you can't see, Austin. Um Hold on, I have to enlarge because right now there's some weird shit going on. Uh, looks a little um, like um, I, I don't know what that looks like. Charles looks Manson, like, maybe as, as, a a oh, as a puppet. Oh, as Similar. Um, the reason I we'll talk about this later, but you guys know we started the join the story initiative. Well, we do, but the listeners don't. So we're gonna let you get to that. All about yeah, little five minute version. It's not increasing empathy through facing ideas or ideologies that you might be afraid of or people that you might be afraid of. So I figured if I could really get into Dave's character, no! <laughs> understand him a bit more, you know, I feel like we can connect, Dave. You don't know me. So you you're, like know a human, me? you're like a human playing Dave as a Muppet. Is that I, right? I, I, you know, it's hard because the only beard I had at the costume store is, uh, hold on a sec. Over beard, so I'm not sure what that says about Dave, but uh, yeah, Mark's asking you to speak up. It's almost as if you have a giant rug over your face or something. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> oh, how's that? There we go. That's what he normally looks and sounds like. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I was really disturbed there. It was the we, podcast we, was 50 percent Dave. We can he still looks like me when I went to the bank yesterday. <laughs> Is oh. this the exact transformation that occurs when Dave witnesses a crime? <laughs> yes, right there. Look at him. He's witnesses, person. you mean commits, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did just witness a transformation for a thin, well-dressed man with circular glasses into some sort of a superhero, just backwards. I, mean, I it wish it was that happen. easy for me. I'm just going to take mine off and just... <laughs> yeah, there we go. See? <laughs> what if Dave, the whole time we've known him, has actually been very much like Austin? <laughs> I think that would be amazing. I keep expecting to find out something about Dave that just like blows my mind, right? (laughs) Like I've known him this long and then like, I'm just going to find out something like he collects, I don't know, some weird thing from the Franklin Mint or like, I don't know what, but some weird thing. Thing that I'm He's just not like, hiding it from you either. No, every everyone to mention it. Everyone no, that you've exactly. ever that's what makes it funnier. Everyone that you've ever lost in your life to death of some sort has been me. <laughs> that's oh, really fun. <laughs> wow. just, oh, okay, there that makes sense. There's the Dave. <laughs> like in the background of every photo is just Dave, like in the corner or something. Yes, you know, I'm the Grim Reaper. <laughs> wow. All right, so. um so, Austin, I gave you just a very quick, um, just like he's going to talk about something cool. It's, oh, okay. it's not really about Story Shop, but also kind of about Story Shop. So, um, I mean, can we talk about the just the origin of this? So, I, I've been very mysterious and coy with the audience, but we talked earlier yeah, this. We got an emergency meeting. He's like, I need <laughs> you guys for 20 minutes. It's an emergency <laughs> But it wasn't like code is breaking or something. It had a different tone. No, but the tone of the meeting was very much like we're on something. Like we're, we got something. And like, you know, when everybody got in there and they were just on it, they were like on it. And so can you, can you like give everybody here what you told us in that meeting and sort of what the drive was behind what we're going to talk about? Oh, absolutely. Well, so, you know, Monday, the, um, that garlic festival, the mass shooting there in California, Um, so I woke up Monday morning and, you know, I checked my phone just right when you get up, that's just a habit. And right there was a headline. So I pulled it up 
And they had this little blip from the father who lost a six-year-old kid. And pretty much the only thing he could say is like, he had his whole life ahead of him, you know, and that's all you can say about it. And I mold over it because so I'm a, fa- I'm a father and my daughter's too. And I kept mulling over the idea of losing your kid. And I, I couldn't, like, I couldn't process it. Have you ever gotten an idea and like as much as you try and turn it around or push it away, like you just can't make those ends meet? That's Dave's every idea. I mean, even including <laughs> like, what am I going to order? <laughs> like, just no right. Idea. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm driving to work that day and I don't, I don't get very emotional that often, but I was crying, um, on the way tearing up because I, I couldn't, there's a, I think there's a moment where you stop and you just kind of look at the landscape of the world and I couldn't comprehend it, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the fifth mass shooting this year. And I'm, I'm like, can I swear on this? Oh yes. Okay. I was like, the fuck are we doing? You know, it's, I mean, it's, it's very sweet language, so. sir. All right. Sorry, Dave. Um, but I, I really, I mean, we're, we're just walking around acting like everything's fine, you know, and we're trying to ignore the stuff that we don't want to I'm not. process and <laughs> yeah, Dave's not, <laughs> nobody's fine. And, and so I got into work and I sat down on our Dave, David Brown, I sat down on his floor and, um, you know, bless his heart. He used to be a campus ministry, um, minister or counselor. And so he's really good at listening and, and walking you through things. So I told him, I was like, Dave, I don't know what to do anymore. You know, like, I don't know how to go about my day, not doing something that actively tries and makes a difference. Because if I don't do something, then I'm just going to watch, you know, I can talk as a U.S. citizen, so I can say, I'm going to watch our whole country just go to shit. You know, because we're not tackling the issues because we're just putting ourselves in camp. So we kind of sat there and that was the prompt. And then we head in the conference room, we got everybody together and we're like, hey, how are we going to do this? Because we have limited resources, right? And, and we are on the Story Shop platform, but we wanted to make sure that's not coming off as like a marketing scheme for Story Shop by playing off this tragedy. So we came up with Exploiting joint Exploiting tragedy since 2019. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously. Um, but yeah, we, we got that going and essentially join the story is a daily writing prompt that we load in the Story Shop. Um, so once you click uh, create a new book, you can click that option and it'll pull you into a different prompt every day. So the first one is Troy. Well, so, which, I'm sorry. Let me, let me back you up, Austin, because I feel yeah, like no, I want to give the big picture thing before we start getting into like details and stuff. So yeah, of course. The, um, so, so you're, you're overwhelmed. You're, you're like, what the hell are we going to do? And you wanted to do something. And so the, the, the big picture before we get into like actual specific things, mm-hmm. um, you know, David was talking about flying a pirate flag which because sean and i didn't know what was happening on this meeting either for a while we're like what oh, the fuck are they talking about 10 or 15 minutes too like yeah. oh my gosh yeah but you so, guys so, all with your kind of rallying cry of like yeah. um we're gonna do something and so how does how does software or writing in general regardless of platform or anything how do writers how are you guys as sort of community leaders what what are you going to do? What are you going to do okay. to, to help affect and there positive was change? Particular in the world? phrasing that David used also um, that I thought was, I mean, it's the, it's the phrasing. If you remember that lit me up immediately. Because okay. It was okay. Like, all of a sudden capture it. He's much better. I got that. Oh, I understand what you're doing now. Okay. Yeah. And it's hard. So we're all the same. I don't know if you guys are in like the Myers-Briggs personality types at all. Dave and yeah, I mean, I'm aware of them. I don't know. Oh, the so we're all this personality type that we have like 15 ideas. And instead of communicating them clearly one by one, we just vomit them out. <laughs> that <makes laughs> on. Oh, that yeah. one That's the S-E-A-N one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, so here's the idea. Okay. Reading increases empathy. All right. And, and the further, again, I, I don't want to make this too political, but the climate that I'm in, like the, my reality is like, America, United States, right? So what we're facing right now is a tendency to not open our minds to other people's stories, whether it be the dad who lost the kid or the guy who actually shot up that garlic festival. And instead, as a result of these tragedies, you're, you're pushing to these camps of what you believe for this, what you believe for this. Like, for example, like this is going to spark the gun control conversation. It's going to be that. That's what's going to come out of it, right? We're not going to talk about the story of the dad who lost his kid in a way that we just want to hear it, right? How he processes that, what, what that must be like. And David on, on, on the another, another end has been really pushing this pirate publishing idea. And he believes that 
well, we all believe we're, we're kind of under the thumb of these larger companies, whether it be a publishing company or a news company, basically anybody who can dispense information. And he's like, you're flying a flag of somebody who's controlling what you read, controlling what you hear, controlling what you see, and trying to make you believe something based on that, right? That is probably not true in its entirety. It's angled to serve something. So David pushed this higher publishing idea to where you fly your own flag, you know, and, and that kind of morphed into joined the story, which is we need to start taking back our stories and, and telling them the way that we want to tell them. And on, along with that, we need to start writing other people's stories so that we can try and understand where they're coming from. And through this, by increasing empathy, we really think that we can make a difference and cross the party lines, not just politically, but just all over, and start sparking a conversation that it's okay to talk about things you're afraid of, right? Like it's, it's okay to admit that you don't know everything you should. A term we're using that this might be one that you guys are really aligned to is redlining, which mm -hmm. is we want to cause an experience. Um, we want to cause an experience just like I had, which was that immediate, like, holy shit. Like I need to start learning or else like I'm going to become just another life that passes through and makes no difference because I didn't try to understand anything. You know, I just walled myself off in this massive echo chamber and nobody's getting anything done if we do that. So that's kind of the overall deductive idea with this whole thing. Go ahead, Sean, you leaned in. Well, yeah, I was just going to say that I think as, as as writers, this is really powerful too, because what makes a great writer, what makes a great storyteller is being able to understand um, all, all sides of something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with like, I mean, everything that I write with Dave, um, you know, it's, <laughs> we always have our, our villains and same with, with Johnny and our villains tend to be sympathetic not because we want the reader to feel sorry for them, but to understand them uh, because that just makes it for a more well-rounded story. And when we understand uh, how every party uh, responds to it, to any situation, then we just understand we have an easier way to find the solutions. And, yeah. and, and that's the problem. I mean, I think what you're trying to say <clears throat> is that we're always solving for the wrong problems because we're having the wrong conversations. And we're having the wrong conversations because by and large, they're being directed. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is about having a, 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 a new two things, a, a place to have, um, well, daily writing prompts that make you, that encourage you to think about a different perspective that you might not have otherwise, which is great exercise for an author regardless. But on the other side, um, it's just great to have a place where you can independently say whatever you want and people who are actively looking to read and um, get different perspectives have easy access to your side of it. Is, yeah, is that absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And you're, yeah, again, you're, you and David are much better at kind of boiling it down to its actually essence. So, um, well, I yeah, think I that the, the, the core point here is um, that the, the empathy solves a lot of problems. Like that's sort of the core of it. Um, you know, if, if people disagree on an issue, no matter what it is, if at least they're able to empathize with the other and understand why they see things the way that they do, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, why they do the things that they do or why they are the way that they are, that those, those are things that can help to heal because then it isn't an immediately like, you're not like me, let's fight, which yeah. is the sort of crap that you see on a battlefront, but also in Facebook when somebody yeah. disagrees. So this is like, this is like you guys saying, how do we, what can, how do we do our part to increase empathy with the world? That mm -hmm. seems like the, this, uh, that's what I walked away feeling. Totally. And, and you know, it's two parts with that. I mean, obviously we're a writing platform, right? And we're focused on authors. Now, this is kind of funny. So I'm actually not a writer, but I'm working for a writing platform, but I love people. Like I, I live to connect with people. And so David and Savvy are really heading off that this is not just increase empathy. I mean, you could use this to just put in your crap, like Sean said, right? To put yourself in the, somebody else's shoes to try and see that perspective. I'm using it as more of that kind of like, I just want to talk to people and hear your story. Um, so yeah, that's the, and on the writing platform comment, yes, it is on story shop and that's where we load the prompts. So people, 
we'll probably have to create an account in order to use it. But that, that's just the easiest way for us to get the pumps out there. We haven't really thought of a way to put that's pumps the, out. There. But that's the free account level, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everything's free. And, and that's what we really want to make clear. It's like, this is not something that we want to pay for or whatever. And like, to be clear, if somebody else wanted to be like, take that daily writing prompt and take it to writing forum, you guys aren't going to care about that. Like, it's just, it, it's not about story shop. I think it's important to, to make that point because we, number one, I, that would feel really gross if yeah. we didn't make that point. But also, um, just because I know that this is a little confusing. Like I mentioned that Sean and I kind of scratched our heads and slacked behind the scenes, like trying to figure out what you guys were talking about for a while, just because. Johnny, Johnny asked me if I thought they were gonna, about to put on a skit. Well, because you guys were also <laughs> dressed up like you were going to put on a skit. That's in addition true. to everything else. That's true. Um, and then, but, but the, the idea is, um, but let's, so let's talk about the, let's talk about the nitty gritty because you, yeah. you started to talk about prompts at the beginning and then I stopped you to pull back and say, let's tell the story of this and why we're doing it. But now that we have this idea and it's like writing from a different perspective or redlining mentally as you trying to step into okay. another set of shoes, um, is a way of increasing empathy and uh, helping people to understand each other in a small way that could maybe grow. Mm -hmm. And so how, What's the mechanics of that? What exactly are you doing? Yeah, so the mechanics, it, it's really easy. We're loading a prompt on our end. And once you get into the actual writing space, the editor, it's, you know, if you use Storyshop before, you know the Beats bar and the World bar and the actual editor in there. Um, so in the Beats bar is the name of the person and the prompt. And then a little disclaimer saying, hey, like, it, like this is the content warning is what it's going to be about. So if it's going to trigger you, it's going to be traumatic for you. Like you need to know what you're going into. And if you look at that and you're like, hey, like this is something I really want to write. So today was um, Troy, and you know, since the mass shooting happened Monday, we put the first prompt for mass shooting, which John, you know, I gave to you earlier this week, and and you wrote for that, so we can talk about that in a bit. But after you get the prompt, it's really free form, and the prompt is about what three to four sentences, you know. And the point is, you don't rail somebody in to saying this is what I have to write. You give them the opportunity to say this is this is who I want to create. This is what I want to understand. You know. and, and it's not persuasive writing. It's not me writing a dissertation to persuade you of, of no. any position, whether it's mine or another. It's mm -hmm. about um, writing a, a scene, right? I mean, Sean did the Absolutely. exercise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, it, it was just enough, a, a little bit of background. And <laughs> I had an, an interesting experience with this. So it was, it's supposed to be a thousand words, flash fiction, um, to be eligible for whatever it was, but I, I wanted I wanted it to be an actual example of whatever they wanted to do. Um, but I, I read the prompt and then um, I asked Bonnie to give me another prompt based on it that was a little more human based. Not mm -hmm. that that prompt wasn't human based, but I needed a, I needed more of a trigger. And yeah. I write with Bonnie all the time and I knew, you know, she would give me a really good trigger. Mm -hmm. Well, Bonnie took it pretty seriously and gave me a few triggers. And so I had, I had, you Wait, know, Bonnie took it seriously? <laughs> yeah. I don't believe it. I, I should have known actually, because because Bonnie, like even if I say just, you know, I just want a paragraph, she's going to go deep enough that that's not what's going to happen. Because as soon as she starts thinking about the story and thinking about the reality, um, then there's just going to be more depth there, which is exactly what happened to me. Because now all of a sudden I have her scenario and the people that, you know, this character meets and knows and, motivations and there was zero chance I was getting that in a thousand words just zero chance and so um I like okay well I like these exercises anything that I have that is a chance to to grow I, I want to take it and so what I did is um I just figured I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna free write this and let it go as long as it needs to go and it was 42 4300 words oh wow um, what was the what was the prompt and what if any alterations did bonnie make to that prompt um you can do, do you have the the prompt austin to read um let's see i can pull it up really quick sorry i should have had that available um how's the weather there dave <laughs> i'll bet it's hot it's hot and lovely wait where do you live again dave redacted florida redacted florida well that's all you need to say i'm i'm sorry <laughs> uh well, there's that okay i have the template here so um it's just content warning was mass shooting and bereavement uh the prompt was troy stems from a long line of farmers in rural california hard-working long-living folk 
His grandfather died in his rocking chair at the age of 82 after an afternoon stretching wire to replace the fence that Troy's neck had accidentally clipped with the road grader. Troy had left the farm for university at SoCal and had never gone back. Boy meets girl, boy starts family, then boy's world crashes down on him when his peaceful existence is shattered by a mass shooting near his home. Um, so that was it. And we, we, it, we went back and forth trying to decide how much of backstory to give. You know, and that's always kind of a, and we're probably going to adjust it still as we get more submissions or read more work, so. Well, okay, so so what's funny about that is there's a couple of elements that um, are, are just in there that are actually in the rough draft that I wrote, but got um, edited out of the final 1,000 words. So, like, yeah. the whole part about the grandpa, um, you know, uh, dying in his rocking chair, that made it in the original. Um uh, but but really, Bonnie just gave me elaboration. Um, and what's funny is a lot of what she gave me, um, I, I ignored <laughs> by the time I got into the story. So, for example, um, I think she had him going to school to be an engineer, and the girl was um, going for marketing. But mm -hmm. I had it ended up that she was a she was a writer and he was a filmmaker, and they met at USC and. Um, and, and that may have meant so that the very end, he solves the problem by making documentaries about the depressed area. And that if, because the, the argument is that the shooter grew up, you know, impoverished and, um, you know, on and on and on. And that part of the reason there is because of the area and the culture. And because people like him, instead of staying and make a difference, they leave. And oh, okay. so that's kind of the angle that, you know, is found throughout the story. But then we just cut it down to, I think the one that I sent you this morning is 995 words. So like I really overwrote the story just to cut it out and find out what is the best, you know, 23% or whatever of that, of that story that, you know, still has the, the beating heart of what we're trying to say. Yeah. So it was an interesting, um, ex or it was interesting as a storyteller to kind of distill what is actually the most important thing here what is the thing that has the most feeling and could affect the most change so what what is done with these stories i'm confused on uh what the point of all of this is uh people submit these things and what are you all doing with them well so the submissions actually aren't open quite yet we wanted to give about a week for people to just kind of process it um eventually we are going to open up submissions for two things one um, actual character templates, which would be maybe Dave, you had an experience where you're like, hey, like I struggled with this, you know, or I think that this might be a good thing for people to write about. Um, you could submit that idea and we'll filter through them and we put it in one day during August. The second was submitting their actual work. And this is something we really have to kind of still flesh out. Again, this is probably, this is a four day old project, you know, so from Monday until now, we were just kind of cramming this through. Um, our initial idea is you can submit your work if you want it to be shared and we'll start doing biopics on people who said like this and like you know impacted me in this way my ideal situation to be honest is let's say sean wrote about this mass shooting and or maybe something a little bit more unique let's say sean writes about a struggle with um severe depression right and somebody reads it and says that's so that's on that hits a nail on the head right like that's so accurate and they can reach out and i can interview them saying tell me what your experience is like and what people got right and maybe what people got wrong so dave for you like a a, a good example would be um you you do a, an amazing job about writing from people with respect like ocd um uh, or there, there's a couple of times um and you know, in our book where the girl keeps the diary, you know, like that book, you, you got those ticks just down. And, um, you know, there's a short that we wrote where you're just really in that headspace. So taking that tack and being able to um, illustrate for other people who don't know what that's like. Like when I, when I read your work about those subjects, I know what it's like. I'm living in your skin. So the idea is to really drive empathy through um, explaining or extrapolating what it might be like to uh, live outside of ourselves and our perspectives. So if this, if oh, this sorry, is not, if, if this is, if, if we're trying to understand people from all sides and all ideologies, I'm guessing, um, you know, is, you know, say, say you got an incel that hates women and he just wants to yeah. kill them all. 
He wants to submit a thing. He wants to be interviewed. I mean, what, what all are you opening up to here? No, we, yeah, we, uh, we actually about talked about we that. Talked yeah. About that. <laughs> this so, was our yeah, first can... pushback, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, sorry, can I just really clarify? Is Can you guys hear me okay on... They're saying it, it's, it, it's muffled. But it's, it, really. it's something to do with your mic and setting. It's, it's just kind of... Oh, it's I'm real sorry. deep. Um, I wish there was a way to fix it while we were in here. That so, actually sounds a little better. I don't know if it's just where like you right here. Maybe on. is that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty better. good. Yeah, you may need to just okay. speak closer to it. Hello. Okay, yes. that sounds good. Let me know if it changes. Sorry about that. Um, to answer your question, Dave, I think there's two things I really wanted to worry about. Again, Johnny and Sean. The first thing they brought up was, "What if somebody wants to just kind of um, what's the term you use? Troll this? Troll right? it." And uh, that's valid. And so we put a disclaimer there saying, if you want to submit something, it can't be pornographic. And it can't just be... Dave's out. To well, be there goes all mine. Yeah, Dave's gone. <laughs> um, but on that note too, I think something I really wanted to communicate is this is not about getting in, just getting into the head of people who are victimized. Right? I mean, I, you could throw tons of victimized people in this category, people who are less privileged, right? People who have had these struggles. Yeah. It's more than that. The problem is we're not hearing the stories of people who are doing these kind of acts of violence, right? Yeah. I mean, nobody wants to listen to the story of the guy who shot up the garlic festival. We want to label him as a psycho or a murderer or something like that. And while, yes, he may, well, it's obviously a very evil act, but the problem is they're not talking until the point where they burst. Yeah. Right. And then you're just going crazy. Same thing with like depression. Yeah, well, mental health is the real. Culture. absolutely you know we don't we, that's not a conversation that's as open as it needs to be I, I i do like the idea of hearing from all sides and i think you know mm -hmm. i've i've obviously written from very extreme viewpoints and uh the the villains are never the villains in their own story that, that there's something that led them to where they are and it is one of those things where you you do have to dive deep but i i think it, it's also going to be you know uncomfortable and unsettling in your you could be opening up some real uh flame wars here but but i'm guessing anybody that's part of the community that's that that is writing is probably uh not going to troll too hard i don't know well we we encourage them to just remember that not everything is a democracy and um a story shop in this case running the the community gets to just make the decision as a dictator <laughs> just be kind of be like yeah i'm sorry it's not chilling effect it's that you're a fucker and this yeah. is going away so well, um, you can't exploit somebody's experience just to be funny or to be edgy right i mean that's i mean beyond disrespectful to take somebody who's actually struggling with something and for you to just troll it well and you could also i mean just quite separate from trolling there's the people who you know cognitive dissonance is basically people are going to be more and more entrenched in their opinions the more contrary evidence is presented Absolutely. it doesn't work the people that try to convince them no no, no that's just going to dig them in deeper so i could see a lot of like just reinforcing cognitive dissonance and it would be like well this person you know um this this, this position's right and no this position's right and it just becomes heated and argumentative and nobody's exploring anything new so uh, those are just things that i think the community is going to have to learn to police but what this reminds me of and this wasn't a fiction piece um but it just, it, the tone is, is similar. And it was when, um, Dave, when you wrote that piece after the election, um, uh, just about sort of seeing both sides of Trump or not Trump. And it was just a, just a fair, like a very even and balanced. Sort yeah, of analysis I, I, of, I thought it was dangerous because some, you know, I, I lean very liberal. Um, but some of my friends even more liberal than me are like, Anyone who voted for Trump hates all women, hates all gay people, hates all black people. Yeah. I'm like, no, there are people that are, you know, they have other reasons for voting for Trump, whether they're misplaced or not, whether, you know, their belief is correct or not, doesn't mean that they hate women and hate everybody else. It, th there's another valid reason. You have to find a valid reason. Otherwise, when you lose connection with people, then the, the, the people on either side are winning because they, they create that divide so we're easier to control. When you're actually talking to other people that are different from you, then there's that divide sort of disappears. And, and that's yeah. what we've gotten away from in the, in the hypersensitized uh, world of media that we are because the, the divisiveness is easy and you click, you click, you click, you click for things that agree with your worldview. You click more, you click more, mm -hmm. and it becomes 
two camps fighting against each other. Yeah, absolutely. And we're more entrenched and we're less together. We're less willing to listen to other people. And yeah, that other person has some crazy shit ideas. But at the same time, there's ideas that y'all might have in common that disappear because, because of the fighting. And yeah. you, can't, you can't see beyond it because the people that are orchestrating, and I'm not, I'm not saying like this is some concerted effort. I don't, think, I don't think it's a manipulation to the level of uh, conspiracy theory. I think it's a manipulation by news organizations desperate for money and desperate to give people what they want. And it's a psychological thing. They found that the more extreme on either side that they appeal to, the more people will pay attention to what they're peddling out. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's conspiracy to control everybody, but still it is controlling people. So, yeah, I, I, well, I you know, it's hard to take this, join this sort of initiative and not America is such a, politically like charged nation right now right it has been that way for three years so it's hard to not make this like completely just politics 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 um there is something to be said about the art of writing and the written word and learning just like you said dave about those opposing viewpoints and the reason we're choosing writing is there's something about it and you guys can speak more to this there's something about it that ex i watch a tv show right they present the villain. I watch the villain. I don't empathize with the villain, right? Like it's showing me what I should look at and think and all that. Writing has this different form to where you're following the thought process, right? You're feeling emotions. You're kind of following along. Yeah. And like I said, you guys speak more to it. Have you, well, I have a question. So for your guys' content, when you're writing from a viewpoint that I guess you've never experienced, how, how do you go about research or what do you, what's your process going through that? Well, I live in Florida, so I have many resources available to me of people that are completely insane. <laughs> you just go uh, on. Uh, our I always program. ask, what, what's the most likely story they're telling themselves? Like, yeah. what is, because I, I think everybody has this in, like, in, not just internal, but like, uh, I don't know, unrelenting need to be the hero of their story. We need to understand, we need to believe that we're the good guys, that we're doing the right things. Or if we're doing the wrong things, it's for the right reasons. Like we need to be able to justify our actions. So when, no matter how dark a character uh, I'm trying to sketch, or you know, if it's an outline, or um, or getting into it, you know, actually writing the story, I don't think it matters. It's it's asking the question, what? Well, two, what led to this moment? because no one just arrives and like kills somebody. There's always, always a reason. Either they are enraged or they have planned it. And if they planned it, there's reasons. Like there's no action that a character can take that doesn't have a reason behind it unless your character is the Joker. And <laughs> insanity, yeah. you know, is what, like that's their trade. And then that's the reason. The reason is because they're insane. Now, you have to use that one very carefully because the Joker really only works if it's the Joker or a strong enough character to, to pull it off. But most people have, in their minds, very rational reasons. And it's usually never a big one. It's usually a lot of tiny little ones yeah. along the way. It's and incremental. Incremental. <laughs> yeah. incremental yeah, I, you know, I, I, so, go ahead. Well, it's acquiescing to the wrong thing or, or surrendering at the wrong time or making, you know, agreeing to do this thing because you agreed to do that thing. And so it's very much, you know, it's breaking bad. It's one little tiny thing at a time. And um, I think being able to understand what are the tiny little things that led to this big thing and what is the actual context of what I'm seeing is mm -hmm. the difference. And wait, maybe that's, oh, sorry, go ahead, Dave. Well, I, I, I think of my own life when, when I was young and I, I lived in a neighborhood that just went to hell. I, I could see different paths that my life would have taken had I stayed where I was. Uh, I probably would not be the person I am today. I, I, I might have turned to crime. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, because I, I know people that I did know did because that was their perception of the only way out. Um, and who knows what my life would be if 
different things didn't happen. And I think that's true for everybody. Uh, I was also bullied in, you know, when I, when I see stories of kids that were bullied that shot up a school, I remember feeling that desperate. Mm. I wasn't going to shoot up a school, but I remember being at such a point of self-loathing and hating other people that if I had the wrong kind of friend that said, Hey, we got to fucking kill these people and get what they get, what's coming to them. Who knows what I would have thought of when I was feeling that desperate. I can see how people's lives could turn with the wrong influences. And it, it's very scary. So yeah, it is. It's incremental steps. It's, it's your circumstances. It's the people around you. And, you know, other times it's, you know, psychological, maybe some, uh, somebody that needs uh, medical treatment or psychological treatment that doesn't have it. There's so many ways a person can go wrong. And I think, I think it does help to try to understand that. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I, what I'm hoping to achieve, what we're hoping to achieve through this is to take those little incremental steps and give me a taste of it or give us a taste of it so that maybe you can piece it together. For example, Sean, like I read yours today. And what I loved about it is the actual description of the event was very short. And the build up to it, that shit out. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like the the build up to it was so warm, and I guess authentic. You know, like there was uh, there was this home feeling, right, that made you invest in this person, and that was a different perspective than the what the news would possibly give you in the same story, right? If the news had reported that, it would have been blood, gore all of that and then a very short blip about this was who he is and you know this is he's six years old whatever and this is his name and that's it oh right it, it totally reverses that exactly and it to me when i want i des i'm desensitized to the news but when i read that story like your short fiction that's that gives me perspective right that hits close to home that person is all of a sudden my neighbor you know not just somebody in another state so that's that's what i i'm hoping to see more of so what's the, um, how do people get involved? How do people get started with or without, well, I guess with Story Shop, um, because that's where it is on the free accounts. Um, but what's, what's, the, what's the sort of the timelines? What do people need to know? How do they get involved? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really easy. You know, we have a couple of videos that we made up, but essentially it's uh, storyshop.io um, forward slash join the story. And that's just a sign up for the free account. And then as soon as you get in there, you can create a new book. And you click join the story and then it pulls you into the prompt for the day. And that changes daily. So you don't have to do anything to change the prompt. And like I said, if they want to share the prompt somewhere, please, I mean, more power to them, right? The more people we get talking about this. Yeah, I, I would almost say um, somebody please do share the prompt. Yeah, absolutely. Because I don't want anyone thinking, well, Story Shop makes you get an account and you got it. That's the CTA. No, no, no. Go ahead and share them wide and yep. far. Absolutely. Because the quicker we get the conversation going... I think the quicker I can push off this impeding feeling of doom, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this, this worry that my daughter's going to grow up in a world where we don't talk anymore. We just say I'm in this camp and this camp and that's my identity, you know? Yeah. Casey just uh, posted a link that I'll just mention storyshop.io slash join the story. Hey, and, I, and I do uh, address one thing. Simon says, Oh, they're insane as a cop out and be little people with mental health issues. Uh, the insane thing for Florida was, was obviously a joke. And yeah, I agree that there, there, there are things uh, psychologically that, you know, we, we don't understand. It, it is one of those things where if, if you can look back at somebody with psychological issues and, you know, find where, where they could have gotten help, then maybe you could help other people before these things get worse um and it, it is something that you know i i think a lot about like where people's lives are and the trajectory and where they can branch off to different paths of reality <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay all right well on um on branching off into different uh, realities thank you austin for being on i think that the, at any point when you had your empathetic dave and uh you end on that note that i think that <laughs> that's a complete show I want a Perfect. series called Empathetic Dave, where we just no. like talk about something until we find Dave's empathy point. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's, yeah. I actually kind of, if, if we're talking about the title being Empathetic Dave, I like the idea of there being two of them, 
there's angry or classical Dave, and then there's uh, empathetic like Dave, and then they get into shenanigans like on the Patty Duke show, or you confuse one for the other. I think we could make maybe a clippy version of Dave, depending on your mood. <laughs> well, we, we talked about that, actually. For a story it's show. Like you're trying yeah. to write something angry. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about that. We talked about it being Dave the Taper. This is before you were involved, Austin. Yeah. But we talked about it being uh, Dave the Taper, uh, who's Dave's spirit animal, but also a taper, I guess. And um, he would uh, just ins- like point out the desperation. Um, well, do you want to save that? Because you'll probably <laughs> just die soon and never see it published. Yeah. That makes me think twice. That's what we were rolling at. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, thank you, Austin, again, for, for being on. Um, everybody join the story. It's really cool. Let's help change the world, I guess, in this big way. Um, and then so we'll talk to you guys next time. And like I said, see ya. Bye-bye. Peace out.